Line fitting is an incredibly simple yet useful numerical method in applied mathematics. And the mathematics required to understand the back end of line fitting is all linear algebra. Howdy folks, welcome to another episode of Computational Linear Algebra where we are going to discuss line fitting. So line fitting is very simple folks, it's where we take the mathematical equation for a line or a mathematical model of a line uh, and we're actually going to use this uh, other version just so that I don't mix notations later on and you'll see why in a moment but we're going to take our observable data and we're going to plug both of these things into the into a machine to determine uh, the parameters of our model here which is uh, our rate of change and our y-intercept or slope intercept and, and slope if that's what you're you're into but to get a good understanding of this we need to understand first the data that we're working with and the data that I've chosen to use for this particular video is from a, a previous video I made comparing random number generators uh, with uh, Rust, NumPy and uh, Python's standard library and with this in understanding this data very simply here, uh, this data is pretty much just the runtime that it takes to generate a certain amount of random integers. And so our, our Y component is going to be just uh, runtime in seconds, and our X component is going to be the number of random numbers generated. And, and you know, since we really only need to use one of these data sets and not all three of these, uh, we are going to focus pretty strictly on Rust, but we could do any one of these because they're very linear in nature. And that's the first thing I want to, to highlight here is you can fit a line to pretty much anything, but there's some things that it's more appropriate to fit a line to than others. And that's all I'll say on that. If you want to know how we can use line fitting in very elementary machine learning optimization Subscribe as there will be a video dedicated specifically to that, but we're not going to explicitly cover that in this video. We're going to focus on the linear algebra behind model fitting. And speaking of linear algebra, we're going to do all of this by solving a linear system, something we've been discussing uh, through 10 episodes of this series so far. And the first thing we need to do in constructing a linear system here because we have to construct all of this in order to you know fit a line to our data we're going to need to take a look at our mathematical model and in this case we're looking at finding our slope and uh, y intercept or rate of change and 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 and, and y intercept our q and m here and we're going to just take these and stick them in our x vector and the big reason being is that, well, when we solve a linear system, we're solving for our x vector. So it makes sense to throw them there if we want the machine to find what these values are particularly. Now, with our b vector, we're going to throw all of our observed results. And so in this case, uh, again, with this particular data set, that's going to be our y values uh, right here. And those are going to be run times uh, just in seconds. The first value is going to be the, you know, the first test we did generating, uh, in, in this specific case, it was 10, generating 10 random numbers. And you can see it goes all the way up to uh, 100,000. And so that's just going to be the observable data. Now, the tricky part comes in with our A matrix. How are we going to construct that? And in order to do that, again, we're going to need to take a look at our our model and that's just the equation of a line and it's probably simpler for us to write it out as a first order polynomial and what we're going to do is just pretty strictly focus on each one of these these uh, x values uh, or these variables in our model um, and we're going to stick x0 in the first column of our a matrix and we're going to stick uh, just x in the second column of our A matrix and, and in reality this is much more simpler than it than it looks because everything in our first column is just going to be one and everything in our second column is just going to be X and so for each corresponding result you're going to have a particular uh, X value to go along with it you know when you're plotting things out you have an X coordinate and Y coordinate so the Y coordinates are what we put in our B vector our X coordinates are just what we're plugging in right here well we don't really have anything to plug in uh, you know, to this first column 
because they're all just ones. And in the second column, we can just effectively put all of our x values, call this second row g of x, but g of x is just equal to x. So if we plug in 10, well, we're just going to have 10. And then if the next one's 20, it's going to be 20, and then 30, and then 40, and so on and so forth. And the reason why I do this in, on order of 10 is because that's actually how I generated this data, is I did it by generating... Uh, you know, 10 more random numbers at a time than, than previously. And so this is what our whole system looks like. We have a uh, n by 2 a matrix. We have a 2 by 1 uh, x vector, and then an n by 1 uh, b vector. That's just simple matrix multiplication. But I want you to notice one thing, these n's right here. More often than not, you're going to have more than two data points. And so that means we're going to have more rows than columns, which means we're going to be working with an overdetermined system. And if you haven't seen my videos, any of my videos on non-square linear systems or the method of least squares, I'll link them in the description down below as I highly recommend you watch them, particularly the method of least squares, because more often than not, we're not going to be able to find a real solution to an overdetermined system. So the next best thing is we're going to find a least squares solution. And so here's the code we're going to use to do all of this. And I've covered a lot of the least squares stuff in the method of least squares video. So again, I'll link that in the description. If you haven't seen it, it's a big part of this entire uh, numerical method of, of line fitting. Um, but you can see all I've done here is we're using NumPy. And I've uh, defined this new function, or created this new function called line fit that accepts our x data and y data. Uh, we're putting all of our y data into our b vector. Bear in mind, this is a row vector. So uh, down here, we're going to need to transpose it into a column vector. So we're doing that down there. But uh, then we're, you know, here we're generating an A matrix of ones. And that's because I won't have to change the first column of this matrix. And then we're just laying in all of our x data into that second column. Then we're going to use the uh, NumPy's least squares function just for a quick way of computing this since there's really no reason for me to use my own custom backend and again a matrix and a transposed b vector so we make sure it's a column vector and then remember the biggest thing here is that we're returning our least squares solution but also the norm of this uh, least squares solution and the closer that norm is to zero the better the solution is and that's going to be very important in this simple little uh, last little bit here we're reading in the data I have from this CSV file and then we're passing in uh, you know the total numbers that are being generated and the runtime into it and then I'm just printing out a few things here for you to see and if we run this code these are actually pr the parameters that we get for that particular data set. We get a slope of about 1.1 times 10 to the negative 6. Our slope intercept, which is very interesting, is almost zero. Remember, this is the least square solution, and uh, you know the, the machine is trying to figure out what the best value is for these parameters. And so this is very close to zero. We would expect it to be zero, because if we look at this data here, um, you know, here is our runtime data, and you can see there's our, our line that was fit over it. You saw the animation of this in, at the beginning. Uh, in theory, if we're generating zero random numbers, uh, you know, all the way down here, it should take zero seconds. But we're not seeing that, and that's because this is, you know, a least square solution. But we got we got fairly close here, and we can see that our solution, our least square solution, is actually not too bad because our norm is very very close to zero. Ideally, we'd like to see that get under a tenth for it to be considered really good, and even under a hundredth for it to be considered exceptional. But this is still very very good, and if you look at you know, the, the line that we've plotted over here, which by the way, if you want to see the code for uh, plotting this line, you can see the full code at the on the GitHub link in the description down below. But you can see that this line overlays fairly nicely with our observable data. You can see that in some in some places, like up here, down at the bottom, it starts a little bit high, and then it comes kind of low in here, and then it kind of levels out in the middle of our observable data right there. But just dealing with this, uh, qualitatively, it, it looks all right. And again, dealing with these numerical values, our norm tells us that this isn't particularly terrible. But that, folks, is line fitting. It is ultimately 
uh, the simplest method in the larger topic of model fitting, which we will certainly discuss much more in the future. And if you're wondering how we can use this methodology for very elementary machine learning optimization, I'll encourage you to subscribe or dig around this channel as there will be a dedicated video to that and this particular numerical method. But I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to let me know in the comment section down below. I'm Nick, one of many Space Cowboys, and I hope to see you again next time.